Hey, thanks for uh, catching another episode of the Fat Guy Podcast. I am the Fat Guy. Most people call me Brett Mason. Why am I qualified to talk about weight loss, health outcomes, ketogenic diet, and all those things? Well, spent the last several years researching all kinds of diets, um, researching the medical journals, research studies, and all these types of things, uh, not only for myself, but also for my mom, who bravely caught can- fought cancer for uh, five years. I have uh, lost 125 pounds. I'm in the best shape of my life since my 20s. <laughs> and um, I've learned a thing or two along the way. With all that being said, I'd like to make it very clear that I'm not a doctor. I have no formal medical training and nothing I say during this podcast should be construed as medical advice or weight loss advice specific to you. These are my observations. These are things that I learned, things that I've learned for myself and my own personal experiences, and you should not construe it as anything more than that. Follow us on the social media, man. I try to uh, keep all that stuff updated with before and afters, what I eat, um, latest podcast episodes, links to latest research about a keto diet or other things I find interesting, diet and nutrition related, weight loss related. Um, the username for no matter which social media you like is Fat Guy Podcast. So whether you want to try me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or even Snapchat where I post what I eat every day, Fat Guy Podcast is the username. So make sure you add me on there. The easiest way to get the podcast, if you're not podcast uh, literate, and I know a lot of people aren't, uh, this may be the first podcast you've ever listened to. The easiest way to get it is go download the Spreaker app. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker. Go download the Spreaker app, search for Fat Guy Podcast. Once you find it, favorite it and follow it, and you'll get notifications about new episodes, and you'll be able to scroll back and see every previous episode. Now, if you're an old had it podcast, of course, you can find us in all the usual podcast places, no matter if you you know, do iTunes or you do Google or whatever, Okay. So, with all that being said, let's uh, get into this uh, this research that I just discovered, which uh, I discover research a lot, by the way. I don't always share all of it, but um, I do find that it helps people a lot of the time come to terms with, you know, people telling them that this is scary. Oh, be very afraid of the ketogenic diet. So, to clarify a few things we're going to talk about here... Low carb, high fat is a ketogenic diet. So, uh, the study that I'm about to reference studied a low carb, high fat diet to determine if it met the micronutrient requirements of an adult male and adult female. This it was posted in the BMJ Medical Journal. Um, it was just posted recently, as a matter of fact. The title of the study, if you'd like to look it up, is Assessing the Nutrient Intake of a Low-Carbohydrate, High-Fat, LCHF Diet. Uh, Conducted by Carrie Zinn, Amy Rush, Rebecca Johnson. Okay, So, uh, the objective was to determine if somebody on a low-carb, high-fat diet would actually meet their uh, minimum requirements of, of micronutrient intake under two different conditions of saturated fat thresholds. So what they did was they designed two different low-carb, high-fat diets. One of them was a low-carb, high-fat diet that would fit within standard recommendations for saturated fat, and that being you keep your saturated fat to less than 10% of your total calories that you intake during the day. And this is what all the medical professionals will tell you. You can't have too much fat, blah, 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 blah. So that was one meal plan that they planned. The other one was the exact same meal plan with one exception, that it could you could eat uh, saturated fat ad libitum. And if you're new to research studies, you learned all these words. Ad libitum means you can eat as much of it as you want. So if somebody tells you that they're referencing a study where the patients could eat uh, fat ad libitum or they could eat carbs ad libitum or they could eat everything ad libitum, that means they could eat as much as they wanted. To satiation. So, two different meals. They they came up with both these meal plans and um, did the research and calculated the micronutrient outcomes for both of them. So, they wanted to do both. One, if you wanted to be low carb, high fat, but you wanted to keep your saturated fats really low, or one if you or the other one if you wanted to be low carb, high fat, but you wanted to eat a lot of saturated fat, which is what most of us ketoers do. 
Uh, we're not scared of saturated fat, and the whole saturated fat thing is a myth in our opinion. So they used something called the FoodWorks Dietary Analysis Software and compared it against uh, national recommended values for all micronutrients. And the results of their study were this. All of the meal plans exceeded the minimum uh, required uh, value thresholds apart from one instance, iron in the female plan. And in that case, it achieved an 86 to 98% threshold. So it didn't hit 100% of the iron, but it hit close to it, ranging anywhere from 86 to 98%. So right at 100%. Saturated fat intake was uh, logistically unable to be reduced below the 10% threshold for the male plan, but exceeded the threshold by 2 grams. So they tried to get it as close to that 10 gram threshold as they could. For women, they did manage to get it in the 10 gram threshold. And, of course, they had the two meal plans, remember. One was the 10 grams or less, and the other was you could eat it ad libitum. The conclusion of their study, despite, micro, uh, despite macronutrient proportions not aligning with curtain, current national dietary guidelines, a well-planned, low-carb, high-fat meal plan is considered micronutrient replete. This is an important finding for health professionals, consumers, and critics of the low-carb, high-fat nutrition as it dispels the myth that these diets are suboptimal in their micronutrient supply. As with any diet, for optimal nutrient achievement, meals need to be well formulated. So, what does that mean? Well, obviously, if you just eat pork skins all day long, you're not going to hit all your micronutrients. But if you eat a well-rounded, ketogenic diet, and that includes... Uh, good healthy fats that saturated fats absolutely from your beef from your you know your steaks or whatever preferably mostly dark meat chicken sometimes throw in a little pork pork sometimes you want to make sure you get that and you want to make sure you get your vegetables your green vegetables you got to get them in and that's one of the myths about the ketogenic diet is that that it's just all meat and that's not the case that's the old Atkins diet a ketogenic diet is not an Atkins diet. An Atkins diet is a high protein diet. A, a ketogenic diet is actually a very moderate protein diet. You eat very, you eat less than most Americans eat in terms of protein. You're you're getting all your calories from fat is the goal. Um, but unlike the high protein diets where you're cramming your face full of uh, meat all day, you actually do eat a fair amount to a lot of vegetables. In fact, a lot of people who come over to the keto diet find out that they're eating a ton of vegetables now. They used to didn't eat vegetables, and I think if you well, look at the way most people eat. Most people don't eat vegetables. And if you seem shocked by that, let me clarify with you first that potatoes are not vegetables. <laughs> and corn is not a vegetable. Corn is a starch. Potatoes are a starch. So most people, when they put vegetables on their plate, it's potatoes. That's the American way. Half your plate is meat. The other half is potatoes. And I don't know. Every now and then somebody might squeeze in a salad or something, but very rarely. A ketogenic diet, you eat salads, you eat really healthy salads, you eat all the greens, you eat the spinach, you eat the kale, you eat the collards, you eat the turnips, you eat the mustard greens, you eat the broccoli, you eat the cauliflower, you eat the asparagus, you're eating all the healthy green foods with all the micronutrients in it. You should at least be getting four servings of that a day, all the way up to six or seven servings of that a day. So, you know, two, four, six cups of these uh, green vegetables every day is what you should be shooting for on a healthy ketogenic diet. Um, so absolutely. I mean, this, 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 it really bugs me that, that I see so many people's lives being changed by going keto and to hear these ignorant, uninformed people or these lifelong industry people or these lifelong medical people bash the ketogenic diet really bothers me because it's really changing people's lives. It gets people off of insulin. It reverses type two diabetes. Uh, definitely from, from an evaluation standpoint, nevertheless, um, medically, uh, if you go get tested on a ketogenic diet after being on it for, for quite some time, many people test the exact same way as somebody who's not diabetic. Now, obviously, um, it's, it's very hard to completely reverse insulin uh, resistance. And so while you can improve it, we don't have enough long-term studies to know if you can reverse it, but we know you can reduce it a little bit so you're a little bit less insulin resistant than you were. But you're still insulin resistance. If you go back to eating the old, you know, if you eat the ketogenic diet to try to get off of insulin or metformin or whatever other stuff you're taking, if that's your goal, um, you know, you're going to always eat keto. You can't 
eat keto for a year and get great numbers and not have blood sugar problems and go, oh, now I'm go back to eating like I was eating. No, as soon as you go back, you're gonna you, the insulin uh, resistance is still gonna be there, so you're still gonna have the problems with the type two diabetes. Nevertheless, you know whether it's functionally reversed, whether it's medically reversed, uh, I, I don't think there's a big difference there. Um, you're getting the same health outcomes from, from, from either way because you don't have the uh, the constantly high elevated levels of blood sugar spiking all the time as well as the uh, persistent high levels of insulin coursing through your body at all times. And, the, and that's the big problem. So um, I'll try if I can to remember to post a link to this uh, study. Um, in the show notes for this podcast. Nevertheless, if I don't, you can probably Google it and find it. Ask Assessing the nutrient intake of a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet. A hypothetical case study design is the name of it. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to us on the social medias. The username is Fat Guy Podcast. Make sure you download the Spreaker app and follow us and subscribe on Spreaker. Uh, the app is available for no matter what kind of device you use. And uh, if you need help with coaching, you want uh, me to help you get on your weight loss uh, journey, by all means, send me a message. Uh, I prefer communicating through the Instagram or the Facebook or uh, even Snapchat is fine. Either way, you can hit me up and find me and we'll talk about it and we'll try to get you on your way. Share this. You could change somebody's life. There's somebody that follows you on Twitter or follows you on Facebook that needs to to know the answer to their lifelong obesity and morbid obesity problems. Share it. You literally could change somebody's life. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.